Hello, everybody. I cannot express how excited I am that the mornings have gotten just a little bit cooler. Oh my gosh, my favorite time of year. The weather, um, the activities, the season, the uh, holidays, the festivities. This is such a great time of year. I hope this is a good time of year for you as well. Um, October is maybe my favorite month for neighboring. Um, because it's cooler to be outside, there's usually national night out when you can meet neighbors, have a good excuse to gather. But then Halloween, Halloween, we need Halloween in our communities. It's a great chance to connect with our neighbors. It's that weird night where it's totally acceptable to walk on a neighbor's sidewalk you've never met before and, uh, and have an interaction with them. And it offers the opportunity to forge connections that didn't exist before that can be followed up with after when it's once again awkward and strange to neighbor. It's the one year it's totally, one part of the year it's totally ex uh, acceptable. So um, one of the great times to connect with God beyond the walls of the church and our communities. But uh, today I am excited to continue with the book of Luke, but first I want to welcome Everybody who's joining us uh, and to this audio sermon and listening to it or joining us here on the YouTube page. I also record all of these um, on video. Uh, they're available on YouTube for those who like our visual learners and like to see my hands and my face <laughs> when I preach. Um, but uh, very excited about you being here and, and joining us. Whether you've been a part of this community for a long time or maybe you're new, maybe this is uh, a new experiment for you to be a part of an online worshiping community, uh, but it's a beautiful small group of people who love the Lord, love their neighbors, are trying to join God in the world, in our everyday lives faithfully. Um, when we get together, we have a, a discussion about the scriptures and how it applies to our lives. We pray together, we pray for each other, we're sent into the world as God's beloved children that's just some of what we do, and, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Be a part of our group me, uh, which is a text thread where we're able to share stories and images and, and prayer requests throughout the week. Um, and then, of course, here in San Antonio, we have a faith community that's growing, a dinner church, and other places are beginning to form communities around Central Texas and, and beyond. So welcome to all. Like I said, we're continuing with the book of Luke. Chapter 5, uh, now we're verses 27 through 39. I'm very excited about this, this good news that comes to us today. So hear these words. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and those days they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for they say, the old is better. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit. 
speak to us where we are today. Open our hearts and minds and look into our lives. We offer our hearts and our ears to you now. And we ask that you would find us in this moment of time in history where we are and help us learn to be faithful. That you would touch those nerves, those places by your Holy Spirit where you want to heal us and teach us and guide us. And that you would somehow knit us together as a community who is working for your kingdom's purpose here in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you can probably tell in this story that there is a little bit of um, tension, a little bit of a conflict going on between different groups of people. And just to quickly give you the backstory, Pharisees and teachers of the law represent the religious establishment during the time and place of Jesus. So Jesus of Nazareth and his time and place, Pharisees were, they were not pastors or clergy, they were lay people who were very committed to the law of God. Teachers of the law are like lawyers, so they go to school for years, but they're not learning about the Constitution or the legal system. They're learning about the Old Testament as we know it, the law of God. And so they are steeped in following that. But that's not all. They've also created all of these other religious systems and expectations and norms and and it's really a huge influence on the religious imagination so this is the establishment that jesus enters into and then there are others who are not quite um in the center of that establishment they may be on the fringes they may be completely outside the belonging of that religious establishment. And this would have included some of Jesus' disciples already, but certainly would have included tax collectors and other sinners. We'll put that in quotes. Um, and so these were folks that the current religious establishment did not accept, um, did not welcome. They were basically saying you would have to go through some extreme changes to be able to fit into the system that we have, this dominant religious system that exists. And so you have in every culture across time and history, these kind of rough categories. Obviously it's a spectrum, but even today we see that there is a mainstream dominant religious environment um, in our culture. And there are those many who feel that they do not fit or who have been told they do not fit. And so this has been the case and will continue to be the case um, probably for, for all of human history. But this is the good news. This is the good news that we are offered in this story and many others. And that is that Jesus seeks out God's new wine. And what is God's new wine? God's new wine, as it's described in this story, are the people who have not found belonging in the religious establishment, in the dominant religious world. They either are outcasts, they have not been told they, in some way they are not welcome, they have not done whatever the religious establishment has required them to do, and yet Jesus goes out and seeks them out, invites them to himself, and gathers with them on their terms to some degree. Gathers with them where they are, in their homes, and with their social connections. And the first part of really good news for this is that, that Jesus seeks us when we don't belong. When we feel like we don't belong, particularly when we think to ourselves, I am not up to muster. I am not up to snuff when it comes to my spiritual or my religious or my prayer life or my knowledge of scripture or my, my behavior or my level of sin or whatever. If you feel like you don't belong, this story, again, among others, Je Jesus comes to you and says, follow me. Jesus isn't saying you've got to become like those other people expect you to be or demand that you are. No, just you, as you are, where you are, follow me. Come to me, be with me. 
And this is such good news. God comes to us. And what it means in our communities, beyond the walls of the church, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, is that we should have the imagination that that Jesus' energy and time, not that Jesus can be everywhere and, and, and be with all people, but Jesus is particularly, I'm going to go out and say, Jesus is particularly interested in coming to those who don't belong, who have not belonged in your community, who have been on the outside looking in, who have been on the margins, who haven't been good enough, who haven't done everything right. Jesus seeks out God's new wine. All these ways I've been describing it, that's God's new wine. That means God is doing something with these folks that don't fit in the existing structure. God loves them. Jesus shows them. I love you. Jesus values them. Jesus is willing to do a new thing to be in relationship with them, to connect to them, to God's salvation and to God's wholeness. And that's very good news. The other thing that's in this story, another layer that we have to kind of unfold here, is that Jesus talks about the circle of life. (laughs) He talks about the cycles and seasons of coming and going, of birth and death, of old and new, sunrise and sunset. And I just, you can feel it in the rhythm of what Jesus does as he talks to these religious leaders. He's saying, look, this is the way things are. You know, there are old things and there are new things. And it reminds me so much of the first chapter of the Bible when, G- when God decides to do creation through days. Where there, and it says at the end of each day, and there was evening and there was morning. The second day, there was evening and there was morning. The third day, that God's grace, God has this sacred rhythm and pattern. God has this sacred move and passage through history of coming and going, of old and new, of days ending and beginning. And I just want to name that this cycle is both sometimes the hardest cycle for us to face, right? I mean, like in the extreme, the way that cycle manifests itself is through our own mortality. We are born, we live life, and we die. The people we love are in our lives and they're not in our lives. Things come and they go. They are new, then they are old. And God is in every part of this passage. So wherever you are in the passage, both in your physical life, in your years, in your time here on earth, right? That is a sacred time, whether it is morning or or afternoon, or evening, whether it is spring, or summer, fall, or winter, God is in the passage of this cycle, and cycle means that it it continues, it starts over, and the the best news of all that we see in Jesus Christ is is that love, and God's power, and grace, and that, that human flourishing in life through Jesus Christ, even though it dies, it reaches the end of a cycle, it is reborn, that there's resurrection, that there's a new beginning at the end of the, the, the last time around. And so I want you to hear that good news. Jesus is talking about that cycle here, and he's applying it to people and to the religious systems. God um, uh, sees things come and go, and Jesus accepts this. He, he just lives into this. It's a matter of fact. And what's interesting, what we need to hear here, part of it is, Jesus isn't judging old as bad and new as good. We often like to do that. We like to go, oh, well, the old is passing away, so it's bad. And the new is cool, and it's in vogue, right? It's hot, and so it's good. And we do that in our culture. Jesus isn't doing that here. Jesus isn't doing that. He's acknowledging that there's old and new and that there are times where those things coexist and intersect. He is saying, though, that there is a um, there is an inability for the old and the new to fully coexist in the same space. There's difference in the old and the new. And that that's okay, too. 
And so I hear in this passage of Jesus that these things all exist and, and God's okay with it. Um, it would be good for us to accept this cycle the best we can. This passage of time, the old and the new, these seasons, things are born and then they pass away and there's grace in all of it. Um, I hope it's clear that part of what's going on here in this story, we're called new wineskins. This is one of the passages about the new wineskins that we believe that God is doing a new thing with new people beyond the church and that the traditional church is an old wineskin. The traditional church is old wine. It's mainly filled with old wine. That is people who are literally older, um, who have a, a part of a religious establishment that is older, and, and that this old wine is passing away. Again, that's not a judgment against it. It is literally the passage of time, and it is sacred, and God is still with the old wine and with the old wineskins. I am actually mostly a part of the old wine. I see myself as being a part of the old wine and the old wine, wine skins. That's what I got raised in. That's what I was taught in. That's what I've mostly done. So, but that is passing away. And we believe God is doing new things with new people, particularly those who have not fit in the old wine skins. And so our neighbors, our colleagues, our coworkers, people in the world who have not been in traditional church, who have not fit into traditional ways of doing things, who have been outcast, marginalized by the old religious systems, Jesus is going to them. I hope that's all clear. Something Jesus names here is that the old wine and the old wineskins is going to feel like that new thing is weird, foreign, strange, unfitting for them. That's why he says at the end, once you've had the old wine, you go, oh, the old wine's better. So when you see the new wine taking place, the new faith communities, the new people doing things, uh, you go, well, I, I don't like this as much. I like the old wineskins. And by the way, let me say, because I know you're listening, some of our old wineskins that are a part of new wineskins, <laughs> we've seen this in our own community. A lot of our online worshiping community are old wine people old wineskin people, and they miss the old wine, even though they're part of new wineskins. And by the way, here's a little whisper, a little good news. And Jesus never says that old wine can't go into new wineskins. He says new wine can't go into old wineskins, but he doesn't say that old wine can't go into new wineskins. And part of the reason for that, in the main difference between this new and old stuff is that the new thing is still unsettled, developing, dynamic, changing, and growing. And it tends to be that the old thing is more settled, more permanent, um, more unchanging, more static, more stable. That's really the difference. And we totally see that right now. The traditional church wants to stay stable, wants to stay static, wants things to be the way they've been. And the new wineskins and new wine is changing. It is dynamic. And I'll be, as an old wineskin person, I am often uncomfortable with and I'm disrupted by the, how, how unsettled and unsettling and dynamic and changing the new wine is. And so these Pharisees and teachers of the law see this moment in a tax collector's house full of sinners and tax collectors, sees what Jesus is doing, feasting and partying with them instead of fasting and doing things the way they expect it to be done. They are uncomfortable with it. They see that it's unsettled. They're like, what's going on here? We don't like this. We're uncomfortable with it. And Jesus says, of course you are. You're old wineskins. You're old wine. That's the way it is. It's not a judgment against you. It's the way things are. And isn't it, isn't it just wonderful that we can accept and embrace this reality that, um, that Jesus is okay with being unsettled? In fact, Jesus chooses to go to those who are still dynamic and in formation. So just remember how wine like when it's new, it's going through chemical processes. It's the yeast is actually working. The things there's it's alive and it's becoming. Jesus is not just okay with that. He he wants to be a part of that. 
And so if you ever feel like you are unsettled, that you are still becoming, that you haven't arrived, that you aren't there yet, that you haven't gotten to where you're heading, etc., that means there's still some new wine in you. Amen? That means that Jesus is particularly interested in new wineskin around you to make you whole. If you are still becoming and if you are unfinished and unsettled, take heart. This is part of the process of God's grace that is sacred. We are called as disciples of this one Jesus to go and tell those who are still becoming and unsettled spiritually, religiously, we are called to go to those who have not fit into the established way of doing church. We are called because we've, we are following Jesus to go to them and to invite them to follow him. The way we do that is through our lives. It's through invitation into community. It's through having dinner with sinners and tax collectors and with the people who didn't fit in before. And, you know, sometimes old wine can come along and try to fit into the new wine skins. That's mainly what our new wine skin online community is mostly old wine folks that are, that are realizing we want to be a part of some of this new wine skin. We want to help it happen. But then the dinner church, for instance, that I'm a part of here in our community, I think is mostly new wine. It's mostly people who, who cannot and do not fit into the old wineskins of traditional church. So we are called to go and to create a place, a community for new wine. Friends, this is just such good news. I mean, it's good news that we are a part of a sacred passage from new to old, back to new, back to old. Wherever we are in that process, it's sacred and God is with us. It is also really good news that God is seeking out those who have not fit in and have not belonged to what was or what is or what has been the main thing. So if you are ever that person or if your neighbors are those people that is good news. Jesus goes to them. And if you are still becoming, if you're unsettled, I want to remind you that um, that's just new wine, becoming old wine. That is God working in you often by the power of the Holy Spirit to make you into something that you already are but have not yet become something that God already has and God's dream, but that you are becoming. May this be good news to your heart and may it be good news to the world that we're a part of. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.